All right, we'll get started. Uh, good evening. Welcome. My name is Carly D'Amato. I'm the director of upper school admission at Springside Chestnut Hill Academy. Thank you so much for taking time out of your evening uh, to meet with us and to spend some time learning a bit about our Center for Entrepreneurial Leadership. I got it right this time. Um, uh, in just a moment, I'm going to be introducing you to our amazing students uh, and the director of the entrepreneurial program. So um, I'll start by just introducing, if you just wanna wave when I say your name, uh, we have Nora, we have Chuck, we have Alexa, Sean, Jack, Paige, she's an alum of the school, uh, Nia, Emily, Mina, and David. And last but not least, the director of the, of the Center for Entrepreneurial Leadership, Ed Glassman. Uh, so again, in uh, just a minute, we're going to be sharing more about the entrepreneurial program. This is an opportunity also for you as parents to ask questions that you may have about the program. Um, I know we've got middle school and upper school families and attendance applicants and students that are just looking at the school for the first time right now. Um, but these students are here to share their inspirational stories and experiences in the CEL department. And uh, they are here to answer your questions. So there is a Q&A feature at the bottom where I want you to feel free to enter any questions that you have. And and towards the end of the event, we will take uh, all the questions that, that maybe are presented. So for now, I'm going to turn the mic over to Ed. Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the time with us this evening. Um, it's always fun talking about what we do here in the Center for Entrepreneurial Leadership, or CEL, as we lovingly call it. This happens to be the um, we're coming up on the 10-year anniversary of the program. So it's been a really nice moment to reflect. I think one of the best ways to kind of walk you through what we do in CEL and why we do it is to take a step back uh, to 10 years ago, where as a school, we had this moment of reflection and we were trying to think through how you take an institution with the rigorous academics of SCH Academy, um, with all the things you would expect from an independent school in Philadelphia and infuse it with sort of the kind of future ready 21st century learning and literacy that we all know young people are gonna need as they begin to tackle some of the largest challenges that humanity has ever faced. Um, so we decided as a school that kind of the, the drumbeat of that work would be to think of every student like an entrepreneur. Um, and we don't just mean kids that are gonna go on Shark Tank, right? Although we have room for that and there are a handful of kids on this call today who maybe will do that one day. What we mean when we say entrepreneurial is young, young people that are resilient and resourceful, uh, creative problem solvers, and people who, when they look at the world and they see challenges, they think of those as opportunities for innovative and creative solutions. And in order to help to build that mindset and that skill set, what we offer is a set of courses that every single student at SCH Academy takes over the course of their time here in uh, pre-K through grade 10 and beyond if they so choose, that sit at the intersection of design, technology, engineering, coding, and entrepreneurship in a traditional sense. Um, so what I'd like to do is briefly walk you through what that curriculum looks like. And I'll start in fifth grade and I'll kind of give you a, a, a sense of what it looks like through 10th, 11th, 12th. And then every uh, person on this call um, has been with us all the way through that curriculum and actually is now in an 11th or a 12th grader and is continuing to work on their own uh, personal venture. Uh, so I'll give each of the students a chance to, to walk you through that. And we're even our, our Fortunate enough to have Paige Alloway's on the call as well, um, who is an alum of the school, who's just completing uh, her university time and just secured her first job in New York. And I like to think that CEL played a, a small part of that. So you'll be able to get a little bit of a, a reflection um, from a senior. So thank you students for all being here and Paige especially, thanks for taking the time out of your evening to be with us. Um, what I'm gonna do to just help paint the picture is share my screen. Um, Hopefully everyone can see my brochure. Yeah, Carly, we got it. So this brochure that I'm gonna walk you through is available on our website, sch.org slash CEL. Also on our website are countless stories of student entrepreneurs of innovative curriculum. So you can always follow up with that at your leisure. 
But what you're seeing over here on the right is the curriculum that all the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth graders go through. Every year, every student in middle school has three different trimester long CEL experiences. Um, you can see that these aren't just intro to business, intro to finance, although there's a little bit in that. I teach an eighth grade class on personal finance and money management. But it's also, how do you tell creative, interesting stories using digital media? How do you begin to explore robotics and engineering or coding or environmental technology and sensors? What is graphic design and why is it important? And then in ninth grade, students pick two of these four options. We have a class on introduction to microprocessors and coding in our robotics and engineering lab, our award-winning world champion robotics and engineering lab. We have a class that is an introduction to app development and design, a class on business fundamentals, and a class on product design. Um, this next page gives you some more detail on those courses up through ninth grade. So a couple that I think are really exciting. There's a sixth grade class uh, that's focused on social entrepreneurship. Um, Social challenges are a huge part of our program as you'll hear from the students. So the way that class works is they research um, the UN global goals. These goals that are set as by 2030, we as a, as a society want to have achieved these major things in terms of ending homelessness, feeding people who are impoverished, eliminating disease, et cetera, et cetera. So students begin to research entrepreneurs around the world that are tackling those problems. And we think that's vitally important because entrepreneurship is about solving problems. And then they connect with a global microfinance network called Kiva and provide loans to those entrepreneurs based on sales of a book that the students create. And so far, we've made almost $5,000 in loans all over the world to support those entrepreneurial efforts. In seventh grade, there's a class where every kid designs their own passion-based TED talk, which is really fun. There's my class in personal finance. There's an introduction to app development and countless other really exciting classes. And then once the students hit 10th grade, they've had a few years to kind of explore different skills and different forms of technology and creative problem solving. They've learned to work together and communicate effectively. We insert them into a capstone program. So the capstone is a semester-based program where we stand up in front of all the students at the beginning and we say, what are you passionate about? What's a problem you wanna solve? And what's a skill or a tool or a technology that you'd like to become more familiar with? And we provide them with a network of mentors and teachers to help bring projects to life. Um, so there are five studios in the capstone. There's one that focuses on app design and coding. There's an invention studio, which is run by our robotics team, a new media design and technology studio, a social impact studio, and a startup for-profit business studio. And many of the students you'll hear from in a few minutes began their ventures in those studios in 10th grade and were so excited about what they began working on that they then entered an 11th and 12th grade elective that we call the Venture Accelerator. That's a course that I teach. It is um, kind of modeled after Y Combinator and Techstars and um, 1871 in Chicago, which I helped found. Um, and we treat our students like collegiate entrepreneurs. We give them startup capital. We give them a retail location on Germantown Avenue. We give them an e-commerce platform to sell things. And we say, hey, you've got a really cool idea. You've proven the validity of it in 10th grade. Let's see if we can take it out into the real world. So you'll have a chance now to hear from some of those students and what they're working on, including Alexa, who's right here. Alexa, hopefully I didn't embarrass you by throwing your photo up there. Um, but that's just a, a very, very brief overview of, of what we do in CEL and how we do it. Um, and now let's hear from the, you know, the kids that have been there and done it. So what I'd like to do, and I'll call on you, is just very briefly, elevator pitch style, if each of you could just talk about um, the current project, business, nonprofit that you're working on in the CEL program. And Paige, when I get to you, you can just talk about what you did when you were a student here. So Nora, um, how about you start us off? Hi guys, I'm Nora. Um, I want to start off by apologizing for the background music. I'm a dancer and I'm at my dance studio tonight. There's going to be burlesque and JLo in the background. I'm sorry about that. But um, I just really wanted to be a part of this because I am really passionate about the CL program. And I think that it's something that really makes our school stand out. So my startup is called Girl Go. It's essentially an Uber or rideshare app like for um, women. So it's all women drivers and all women riders. 
And the basis of it is just to make women feel safer in situations like that, especially younger women, people that are high school age, college age, oftentimes when they get in an Uber, they feel uncomfortable or threatened by a driver or a situation that they're in. And Girl Go just really wants to ensure that our riders feel super safe. Thank you, Nora. Uh, that's great. Mina, could you go next? Yeah, hi, I'm Mina. I'm a senior and um, I had a little bit of a different path in CEL. I started in 10th grade with my capstone project as a nonprofit that I started. Um, and then after I discovered it wasn't sustainable, I joined a project that was already founded by previous CEL students called Zonos to America. It's a nonprofit and we're partnered with the Weaving Village in Cambodia and we source our products through them and sell them through our e-commerce website and in retail locations in Chestnut Hill and donate all the profits back to fund their salaries and their scholarship program. Great, thank you, Nina. Um, Sean, would you like to go next? Yeah, so hi, I'm Sean, I'm a senior. And I guess just to start it off, um, I started Capstone in 10th grade with a completely different product I'm at now with, I was making plastic, recycled plastic phone cases and um, it was really fun. I learned a lot, but like I ultimately learned that it wasn't really sustainable, just like what um, Mina was saying. So then in Venture Accelerated, I wanted to find a new idea. So I looked at like what I was, what I was doing at the time and I was trying to find a job. And let me tell you, it was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be because every single job I found was just like at Wendy's or McDonald's and or it said like 18 plus or needed a college experience. So I was like, I'm gonna create my own website for this. So I created uh, Janice Jobs which is a website that helps teenagers find their first job. And then it also provides tips and tricks, um, like resources to um, for like resumes, interviews, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then currently now I'm working with another partner, Maya, who couldn't make it to the call tonight, um, trying to help pair um, reti um, retired kids out of the foster care system and help them find their first job with job training and a guaranteed job in the future. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Um, Alexa? Hello everyone, I'm Alexa, I'm also a senior. As you can see a little bit from the photo in the catalog, um, my nonprofit is for those experiencing homelessness. And so it's backpack kits filled with essential items and I drop them off at different shelters in Philadelphia. I've currently raised over $30,000. I'm working to donate 1000 backpacks by the end of this year, I've already donated 500. Um, and I'm just trying to help solve problems that people who are living on the streets face every day. Thank you, Alexa. Chuck? Uh, hi, my name is Chuck. I'm a senior and for the last couple of years, I've been working on a product called Talk About It, uh, which is a card game that inspires people to discuss their mental health in a more enjoyable and low stakes environment. Wonderful. Um, Jack? Hi everyone, I'm Jack and I'm a junior. Uh, last year, my partner and I started a company called Student Connect. Uh, which is an online platform that helps facilitate uh, peer tutoring within high schools. Uh, so my partner and I, Brady, um, we, we really have a passion for education and we wanted to find a way to help struggling students in schools um, have an extra outlet for support. Um, and we've done a lot of research that's proven that peer tutoring has been beneficial for um, the peer tutor and the struggling students. So we've been building this uh, platform to help students out in high school. Great. Nia? Hi, everyone. I'm Nia. Um, for my capstone project, um, I was also similar to Alexa in the social impact space. I um, essentially started a tea business that was um, going to help um, refugees get the essential items that they needed. Um, today, I'm working on a slightly different project. I am uh, working on a book called Small Business, Big Heart, 30 Stories of Social Impact Entrepreneurs that really focuses on sustainability, um, social justice, and economic justice. So um, things have changed, but I'm still in that space because I really want to help people um, just be the best selves that they can be. Great. Um, Emily? Oh, Emily, no audio. I'm so sorry. Okay. Oh, wait, I think I got it. Can you speak again? Is it working? Yeah, we got you. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. 
Um, hi, I'm Emily. I am a junior um, and I am in the process of writing um, an A to Z uh, children's book of successful women who have really paved the way for um, young girls. And like Mia and Alexa, I was in the social impact studio because I was really passionate about um, young boys and young girls and young anybody um, needing to know the importance of women in society. Um, so yeah, it's basically an A to Z book um, of profiles and biographies of a bunch of women who have uh, sort of paved the way uh, in their specific field or in society in general. Wonderful. Young? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Young. I'm a senior here. And uh, a little bit of background information on my project. So there was uh, this 6.9 scale earthquake that happened in Yushu, Tibet, 10 years ago in 2010. It orphaned thousands of children and put them all out of school. So um, what, I'm, what I, with my uh, nonprofit Yushu Were Born, here is trying to do is that we're trying to support these uh, students to go through a free medical school education. To date, we have been able to raise uh, $80,000 to build a um, medical facility for the school that we're partnering with. And uh, we are also be able to um, raise money for a solar water heater there that is able to support 300 plus people to shower. And yeah. Wow. Paige Aloise, I hope you're impressed. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say these are crazy businesses. And I was gonna say congratulations to all of you for coming up with these ideas. They're all so amazing. Yeah. I could have never come up with them when I was when I was in high school. But you had a pretty good idea. Do you think you could talk a little bit about um Sitterbook and then maybe give us a little perspective of someone who's who's finishing college and onto career, like what lessons from CEL really stuck with you and, and what you think makes the program unique and special? Yeah, for sure. So I'm Paige. I went to SCH for 14 years, and now I'm a senior at Fordham University in New York studying business administration, concentrations in consulting and marketing, and a minor in psychology. But when I was at SCH, I had a business called Sitterbook, which was a website that connected trained babysitters from the high school with parents from the lower school. And so they could go on and look at all of the babysitters availability, book them right on the site, see their interests to match it up with their kids um, and stuff like that. So that was a really fun project that I worked on for two years in CEL. Um, but I think one of the most important lessons that I learned at CEL was resilience, as Mr. Gossman said, and, and problem solving. You don't have that many opportunities in college, especially in your first few years to learn how to solve problems and especially in the real world and apply those um, sustainable development goals from the UN. Um, and so I think that was definitely good. And also just the project-based learning. No one is gonna tell you what to do. You really have to figure it out by yourself. And you're probably going to fail as you guys have all experienced many more times than you're going to succeed in the beginning stages. And so learning how to adapt quickly and change your idea, maybe even your whole idea or small aspects, even if you were really set on one thing, um, I think is really important. Awesome, thank you for sharing. All right, I'm gonna throw a couple questions out there. We can kind of do it like popcorn style. Just raise your hand if you feel like you've got a good answer. Mina, I will come to you first considering you only have a few minutes if you feel like you've got a, something to share, okay? So let's start off with, um, what has been the most inspiring or transformational experience that you've had in your CEL journey? And it can be accelerator, capstone, even if you want to reach back into the depths of middle school for someone like Jack, whatever in relation to CEL, now, now you can share it. Paige, yeah, go ahead. I'll go first. Going off a little what I said, but of just doing everything yourself. So when you get like, a real job. If you're not an entrepreneur, you don't get to touch every aspect of the business. But when you start a business at NCEL, you're the head of marketing, you're the CEO, you're the CFO, you're the COO, you're really everything. And so that also gives you the exposure to figure out what you like. So then when I came to college, I started to figure out more from those experiences 
of what I liked. And also, as Mr. Glassman said, you are really treated as a college student as you're going through all of the classes. I've literally taken all those classes in college now because um, I didn't take them when I was in lower school because the CL program wasn't there yet. But I was in like a social innovation course. Right now I'm in a sustainable business course where we're learning about those um, UN sustainable development goals. And so to have that exposure really early on, because I um, started learning about like those goals this year. So I think that's really cool as well. And also just all the different tools we learned, like my one of my midterms was an activity that we did the personas and like journey maps, which I remember doing for my business in like the second week of CEL, that was literally my midterm for one of my classes. And I was like, oh, this is so easy. Like I've done this so many times for Cinderbook. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Anybody else? Yeah, Mina. Just going off that, that's definitely one of the best parts of CEL for me is being able to touch every part of a business because like this year I've been going through the college application process and so much of it is about like figuring out what you want to do for the rest of your life, which is such a daunting task and um, being able to have a program like CEL where you can decide basically on a whim that you want to explore a certain topic and then to have adults to guide you through this kind of personalized study and have them connect you with people who are working in the field that you are looking to explore is so helpful and has really helped me figure out what I want to major in, what I want to have a future career in, and what is important to me in a company that I want to be working for in the future. And that's something that I just feel like is going to give me such a head start in my career life, my college life, everything. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, what do you guys think makes the CEL classes unique? Um, from what you would normally expect from a, um, you know, traditional school. And it can be, it, again, if you want to, if you want to talk holistically across the program. Uh, Sean and then Alexa. Um, what I think is different about CEL is that the, like the, the curriculum focuses on you and like really only you. Um, we, we, at the beginning of the year, co-build our curriculum and our rubric with Mr. Glassman and everything is focused on what you want to get done and what you like pretty much need to get done to be successful. And coming from my experiences, I transferred to SCH in 10th grade and in ninth grade, I took basically every single business class imaginable in my public school, but nothing really like kicked. And like, I really loved business, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And when I found CEO and I found SCH, like the whole program really just spoke to me, how you do what you want. You, the teachers work with you. It's a small group. Like my classes here for venture accelerators only two kids. So we're really working one-on-one -on -one with Mr. Glassman and it's just really, really a good experience. Max? Speaking to just how unique the program is in CEL, I came in fifth grade. So I also went through the middle school CEL and you learn things that you're never gonna learn in a science class, in a history class. Um, you can talk to Nia, she's been in my class for the past two years and she's helped me design a website for my business. And I can tell you that I had no prior knowledge of how to build a website ever. And then with her and Mr. Glassman, I learned how to do that. And because you're open to all of these new opportunities, you are learning different things that you may not have originally thought of. I can say like, I probably would not have selected to pick a coding class. And that was one of the most fun classes that I've ever had at SCH. I ended up building an app in ninth grade to just talk about NBA players and figure out if you type in a person's name, you can figure out what team they're on. And I just think because there's so like there's such a broad range of the classes, you really figure out what you're passionate about. And maybe you wouldn't have selected that class, and then you'll you'll realize that that's something you're actually interested in. So I think that's also really unique about the program. Awesome. Emily. No. Do that, do that fix that you did last time. The magic. It is working? Yes, we got, yeah. Okay, I'm so sorry again. It's okay. Um, so, and I'm kind of in a different boat than Sean is. My uh, Venture Accelerator class has seven people, I think, in it, which is pretty big for an accelerator class, right? Um, yeah. The, so, the teacher to student ratio in Venture Accelerator is incredible. The prospective parents, you'll never see anything like it in any of our competitor schools. So um, in my accelerator class, it's pretty 
great how we all get to work together. We sort of have a, a cohort collaboration thing going on, uh, which is a, a big thing for us. It's the most collaborative class I've ever taken. Um, and like Alexa was saying, it is, it's just so interesting to see how your fellow students and your fellow peers are um, going about their own projects and seeing how you can help them and how they can help you and how you can just learn about uh, other fields that you never thought that you'd be interested in. Like Nora's in my uh, accelerator class and I know she had to leave, she had to go back to dance, but um, she, like I am so intrigued by her project and I always would love helping her out in any way that I can. She helps me out in any way um, that she can. And it's just the collaborative part of CEL that I really love. That's great. Thank you for sharing that, Emily. Chuck, and then we'll do Nia after Chuck. Uh, yeah, so kind of going off of what Mr. Glassman was just saying about the uh, teacher to student ratio, um, it's obviously really great. And especially in the uh, 10th grade capstone course, um, all the teachers have their, their own expertises in their different fields um, with the five different um, kind of areas that the capstone uh, covers. And all the teachers have their own connections with other experts in that field. So they'll set you up with a lot of expert interviews. I think over my three years with the capstone project, I've done probably over 20 interviews with experts. So that also gives you a head start going into your college and um, career later on because you're introduced to that kind of professional area in high school. Yeah. Um, so first of all, shout out to Alexa's website, helpingthehomelessbackpacks.com. Not just because I helped design it. I like, I genuinely believe she's an awesome human. So like, go check out the website. Um, I am a person who started out really not um, thinking about the world of business at all. Um, I currently am thinking about going into medicine and uh, English because I have always loved to write and I have always loved biology. But business was never really besides kind of the generic Shark Tank version of what business was. Um, that never really entered the scene for me. Um, but once I started my capstone project and I realized that there were so many things that I love to do that could be incorporated um, into business, for example, the web design. Like I love to design things. I was able to incorporate that. Um, right now, when I do my interviews with so many different business owners, I'm practicing, I'm practicing um, journalism and the skills that I use for that. And so all of those things um, come into this great program that really allows me to just be who I am, but like maybe it's a little bit more, you know, amplified and business oriented. So I love all of that. Wonderful. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, Mina. Um, I have to sign off in a minute, but I just wanted to say one other thing that is so great about the CEL program is just how resourced it is. Like it's such an amazing opportunity that you'll probably never have again in your life to pursue a venture with kind of no risk. The school supports your ventures financially or with um, venture uh, help and like helps you get started with Kickstarters or whatever it is that you need. And this year, the CEL space has offered my team and I an office to help us collaborate better. And it's just really amazing. And there's like more support than you could ever need. So I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, Mina. And, and to the audience, I will be sending out a list of all of the websites of the various student entrepreneurs that have websites to share. So you can take an in-depth look at helping the homeless backpacks and so us to America and Young, maybe that's a prompt to get your website published and we'll, we'll make sure you guys all get that. Mina, thanks so much for joining us, appreciate it. Um, what do you guys think that prospective families should know about the CEL program as they consider SCH for their kids? Yeah, Paige, and then we'll do Jack next. Yeah, well, I'll say going off of what Nia and Mina just said, it is such a unique experience to practice entrepreneurship, even if you're not interested in business, um, with little consequences, like you're really just able to try and fail as many times as possible um, until you succeed. And that's like super unique. And as Mina said, rare to find again in life. Um, and also, it's just a great opportunity to explore business. Like CEO is the reason I came to business school, so I credit basically my career to Mr. Glassman and, and the CEO program. Age, your, uh, your major mix is literally the same major mix that I had at Northwestern. So is it actually? You're, yeah, you're, on a great, you're on a great path, just like a- That's so funny. <laughs> um, 
And also I did my CEL six years ago. I started it and I graduated four years ago. And in my interview for the full-time offer that I just got, the first question he asked was, I see on your resume, you founded a business. Could you tell me more about that? And I can say I've had many interviews over the past three years and almost every single one asks about it or I bring it up in, in um, some sort of question. So it's also very beneficial for just learning experiences and stories. Like you're not going to come out of CL not learning anything. You're going to learn so much. Cool. Jack, you had your hand up, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, I just think one thing to point out for prospective family is, uh, is that you can come into the into the program without any prior experience in the you know business world or with a business mind and honestly that you can come into any one of our cel classes whether it's middle school or studying at the ninth grade level or any caps even the capstone with you know not a lot of um skills or you know uh you know skills in certain areas um it's really all just about the mindset that you have and the willingness to want to work hard and make the most out of the classes um and that's something definitely for me that i've um, you know, thought about like in ninth grade, I remember taking Mr. Randall's robotics microprocess microprocessors class. And I had absolutely no idea what I was doing in that class because it's really, it really complicated stuff for me, but some people, you know, thought it was easy. So you can come into the classes without, um, you know, specific skills, but as long as you work hard, you're going to, you're going to learn something. And then at the end of the class, you get to evaluate like, Hey, is this something I'm interested in pursuing or if it's something you want to cross off the list? Yeah, I would just, that that's great stuff, Jack. Thank you. And, and I would just add CELs, this like really interesting bucket of the school where we've just gotten rid of grades entirely. I mean, in Accelerator, we gave grades, but it's mostly just because we want to make sure you guys have like the credit for college, but middle school all the way through 10th grade, it's pass fail. Um, and it's intentionally designed that way because we want students to be able to like try things and take risks and put themselves out there and not be so obsessed with what's the letter grade I'm going to earn. Um, so it's another thing that makes, makes us unique. Um, I think we covered a lot of stuff. Should we start taking questions, Carly? Yeah, absolutely. Again, for our, our, our the people that are listening, uh, please feel free to enter any questions into the Q&A feature for our students. They, you can ask about the CEL program, you can ask about the upper school in general, um, but this is an opportunity for you to ask Ed and our students some questions. Uh, one family has written in, and this might be a question for Ed, if a student enters in 11th grade, are there opportunities in the CEL program for students joining in grades outside of ninth and 10th? Yeah, we have uh, we have that right now. One of our one of our best entrepreneurs uh, just entered in eleventh grade. Um, what the answer is absolutely yes. Um, sometimes what we do is if that student wanted to enter um, the accelerator, for example, we would have them start with the capstone program and just schedule them during F block, which is when capstone meets, um, and then they would go through the first. Uh, semester of capstone so they can go through the brainstorming process, identify a project they want to work on. And then if they love it, they just flow right into accelerator and they can take that second semester uh, junior year and first and second semester senior year. Um, if a student comes in with an existing venture that they're already fired up about, we just put them in accelerator and just start working with them. So yeah, 11th grade is totally fine. As long as the student's passionate about what they're working on, they'd be a good fit for everything we're doing. Thank you. Another question, uh, how does CEL fit into the daily schedule? Um, middle school, the classes meet three times every um, seven days. So it's like, I don't know, twice a week on, on average, something like that. Um, and then it's similar in high school. Um, so on average, the students would have two CEL class meetings every week. And then Venture Accelerator, it's uh, it's a full class, so they meet, you know, four times a week on average. And does it class take blocks are, class blocks are fifty five minutes long at our school? And does it take place of other core or elective opportunities? Nope, built into the built into the schedule. That's I'd say that's like as you look because I imagine if you're on this call, you're probably looking at other uh, peer schools. You're going to see a lot of schools that have maker spaces. 
Lots of schools are trying to copy us and they have, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm very competitive. They're, they have entrepreneurship programs in high school and that's awesome. Um, we're one of the only schools that has made a commitment in terms of time and faculty and schedule that every student has these sorts of experiences. So you're hearing from kids that have gone with us the whole way, but like any SCH student you talk to has had experiences in coding, in engineering, in entrepreneurship, in design, because of the commitment that our school has made to the CEL program. Thank you. Uh, and again, families, feel free to submit any questions. Um, maybe just opening a, a, a bit more of a general question, but what other uh, CEL obviously has been an inspiration for many of you here, all of you here. What other classes are you enjoying at SCH right now? Anyone have a favorite class at the moment that they're willing to, to talk about? Well, CEL is my favorite class. So if I had to talk about my second favorite class, um, I would probably say that's anatomy and physiology. Um, I am not a science person. When you go into 12th grade, you actually don't have to take a science class. And going in through all of high school, I kept telling myself, I'm not gonna take a science class senior year. I don't have to, I really don't like it. Um, and then in 11th grade, when I was picking my schedule for 12th grade, I actually really enjoyed my biology teacher. And so I asked her what classes she taught in or like for senior year, and she ended up teaching anatomy and physiology. Um, and so I took the class just because of her and I also want to go into sports and so we kind of learned about sports medicine in the class and it is something that I would never have gotten into and it's just exactly like CEL um, but I actually just did a practical the other day looking at bones uh, looking under microscopes at a bunch of different cells so that's an interesting class that some some schools have but I don't know of many that do. Awesome. Anyone else? Nia? Um, I'm loving my AP literature and composition class right now. Um, not loving, we haven't gotten our essays back yet, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I did on that, but the class I really love, um, this is not really a question you asked, but like I think for people who are really trying to like pursue hardcore academics, like I'm taking four APs right now, and I had every reason like not to include a bunch of other electives in my schedule, um, even CEL, but I love CEL so much that I was like, I need to make this work and include it in my schedule because at the end of the day, it didn't feel like just another class. It also felt like um, just something that I love to do. And so if I could incorporate it into my schedule, I feel like SCH makes it really easy to do that. So that's why I love it. Great. Uh, Ed, a question maybe. Uh, Chuck, you talked about this. Mia, you talked about it a little bit about the interviewing that you've had, the, the interviews you've had the opportunity to do with your projects. How, what, who are we connecting the students with through the CEL program that are not necessarily associated with SCH faculty directly? Yeah, great question. So philosophically, we think that one of the best things we can teach our students to do is to be resourceful and build their professional network while they're still in school. Um, the network comes from three different kind of buckets. We have an incredible alumni group, right? You met Paige. I mean, she's stellar, but there are like, there, there are, you know, a lot of people out in the community that are doing incredible things across tech, across engineering, across entrepreneurship. So leveraging the alums is a great way for our students to build their network and it's great to stay connected with our alums. Um, the second way we do it is um, through kind of our, our broader faculties, professional connections, especially in CEL. Uh, I make it a core responsibility that the people I hire actually are coming from industry. And it's always awesome when they like still have a professional you know, life outside of the school, like our director of in, um, interactive technologies, Dr. Day also runs his own marketing agency. Um, one of our design and new media instructors is also a licensed architect. So we're like pulling those people in from um, our, general, our general network. Um, and then in addition to that, it's the parent community. I mean, a lot of parents at our school are entrepreneurs themselves. Um, so every year I give a presentation to the kind of parents committee and I say, Hey, you know, one of the best ways to stay tied to our school is to become a mentor in CEL. So it's really those three, um, 
buckets that we use for our, our professional networks. Fantastic. Um, I think at this point, that was the questions that have been submitted. Um, for our families that have attended, if there are additional questions that you have after um, and you'd like to be connected with Mr. Glassman, if you have questions for our students, I am here to help you in any way that I can in terms of facilitating future conversations about the school, the process, the program. Um, Ed, I don't know if you have any final words that you'd like to give to everyone. Sure, I'm an alum. Uh, I, you know, graduated, I went to Chicago for a decade. I started a couple of businesses and, um, coming back here has been the most incredible journey of my life. You know, you, you come back and like, oh, I'm going to work at the school where I started. I thought I'd be here for a couple of years to help get the CEO program off the ground. And now I'm coming up on year seven. And the reason is because of the kids you just heard from. I mean, if you weren't inspired by <laughs> what you just heard from these you know, 17 and 18 year olds who are launching these incredible projects and who are so passionate about what they're doing, um, then I'd be surprised because uh, they impress me every day. And it's a real pleasure to, to work here and to get to have a chance to partner with them and mentor them. Because I don't think of myself as an expert that's like lecturing them every day because there's no way that I can be an expert in, you know, all of these industries at once. Um, and hopefully, you know, you give us a chance to, work with your kids if you're a prospective family and see what sort of transformational journey they can go on during their time at SCH Academy. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, you, all of you are truly inspirational. I can't help but like smile from ear to ear hearing about all the work that you guys are putting into your projects and knowing you have kind of evolved over the last four plus years, um, Paige, nine uh, plus years. It's really impressive. So uh, again, thank you all for being a part of this event and taking this time out of your evenings to be here with our families, to the families that took an hour out of their night. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope to see you on campus sometime in the near future so that we can show you the CEL space in person and perhaps you'll be able to tour with some of the students that are on this call uh, tonight. So again, thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to hopefully speaking with you again in the near future. Have a great evening. Thank you everyone.